Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. I'm going to take you through two different styles of mole calculation now for moles too. And the first one is adding a metal to water to create an alkali and some hydrogen gas. Now this isn't a reaction you actually need to know for the specification, that's why you've been giving it to you, but they could have described it. And you could have actually written this equation had they tasked you to write it um, using the state symbols. I don't think they're particularly uh, strenuous to figure out. Uh, but also you could have uh, balanced it slightly differently. You could have put a half in front of the H2 and left everything else with a coefficient of 1. Uh, but obviously they've given it you now, so that doesn't really matter too much. But just a heads up that any multiple of this equation would be absolutely fine, and you'd be doing the exact same process. So, we've been told there's a mass of the potassium, and it's reacting with excess water. Now, the thing is, because you've been told the water is excess, that means don't go near the water, because really... you the moles of it don't matter because there's enough there to do the reaction and then some, so the actual moles that are used are completely irrelevant to the question. They could use a million moles and really it doesn't make any difference. Calculate the volume of the gas formed. So you've been told to calculate the volume and we can see that the only gas being formed is just the hydrogen. Always double check if there's more than one product that only one of them is a gas in this case because I've seen questions before where there's been multiple gas products and they said calculate the total volume of gas formed and actually it's several things. Um, you've also been told specifically you want it in centimetre cubed and this bit here, this standard temperature and pressure, this is to tell you that you can use the molar gas volume. So at some point here we should be using 24 decimetres cubed or 24,000 centimetres cubed. It doesn't matter too much. So let's have a look at what we actually need to do. So to start off with, we've got information for the potassium, which is really crucial. What we've got here is we've got a mass for the potassium. So we're over on this side over here. So straight away, considering I know long term I'm going to be over here with the hydrogen, I can start with the potassium and then use the foresight to look forward and see that I'm going to be moving through, using the stoichiometry, using the balancing of this equation, over to the hydrogen here. Now the reason that I know I'm going to have to do that is I don't actually have any information really for the moles of the hydrogen. And one of the other ways to find out the moles of something as a product is to use the known moles of completely used reactants. And that's exactly what I've got here. I know the mass of potassium which reacted with excess water. We've been told that that potassium has reacted. So I'm going to figure out my moles of potassium. It's going to be nice and clear for you here. So we've got a mass divided by an AR value. I'm using AR here because it is a metal and therefore you do just use the AR value. So the mass value there is 0.2346. That's given to me by the question. And just like your eye colour and your hair colour matches you, we've got to use information that matches the one material. So now I've absolutely only ever got to use this particular mass value with the AR value for the potassium. So the AR value for the potassium from your OCR periodic table has got to be 39.1. You've got to make sure you use that one. And that gives me a mole value at this point of 6 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, there we go. Now, Notice I've not used the two coefficient at all from the stoichiometry, which just means the balancing of the equation. I've not used that at all here because I'm going to use it next. Now what it tells me is, if in a perfect world I did react two moles of potassium completely, I would only make one mole of hydrogen. Now here I've not, of course, used or reacted two moles of potassium completely. I've got six times ten to the minus three. So what that means is I'm going to create half that amount of hydrogen. So my number of moles of the hydrogen, nice and simple, is going to be the moles of the potassium divided by 2. So that's going to be 3 times 10 to the minus 3. And I got that just from the balancing of the equation. I really think this is something people forget. That even though you don't have enough information for a triangle to calculate the moles of the hydrogen, you can get it from something else if you have the balanced equation. And that's exactly what I've just done here. Now I've got the moles of the hydrogen. What I can do finally here is I can calculate the volume. So the volume is going to be the moles times the molar gas volume. Now the thing is here, because we've been told to calculate our final value in centimetres cubed, I'm actually going to use at this point 24,000 instead of just the 24 that's on the data sheet. And just because it skips me a step, it just keeps it a little bit simpler because I'd have to times by 1,000 at the end anyway to convert the decimetres cubed into centimetres cubed. So I'm just skipping that out. And our value here, our answer, is just a nice simple 72 centimetres cubed. There we go.
So each mark roughly here is for each line of what I've done, and you can see my working out is nice and clear, and that would get me all three marks. Okay, up next now, we've got a really classic example of one of those questions where you have an amount of moles that are used in a titration, and you've got to then do something to that number to make it the moles in a complete solution. The reason I've given you this one as well is, as you can see from over here on the right, it's also three marks, just like the last one was, and it's also taken from exactly the same exam paper. So it's, an, it's a classic example of how they've taken something and made it more difficult within the same paper, and it's to show you what a next level answer would look like from a really top grade student. So if you're looking for an A or a B, then this is absolutely the kind of question you should be getting 100% right. Now, first off though, the marks are pretty much the same as last time, but using a slightly different triangle. Uh, the student was given 400 centimeters cubed of aqueous ammonia solution. The student was asked to determine how many moles of NH3 had been dissolved to prepare the solution. Not even a mass, just the moles. How many moles were used to make that solution of 400 centimeters cubed? So it's 400 centimeters cubed of ammonia. The student titrated 25 centimeters cubed, there we go, and found that it reacted with this volume, 32.5 centimeters cubed, of sulfuric acid. You can tell it's a recent question because it's got an F for sulfuric instead of the old pH. The equation for this reaction is shown below, fab. Um, now really for this question as well, what's nice about it, as with most titration questions, you don't actually need to look at this bit just here at all. You're just really concentrating on the ratio on the left hand side and we can see that that is clearly 2 to 1. Calculate the amount in moles of the NH3 in the original 400 centimeters cube solution. Now, again, just like with the last question, really what I need you to get in the headspace of thinking is, I'm not starting over here automatically with the NH3. I should be starting over here and working my way across to this, okay? And the excellent thing about knowing how to do that is you've got the volume and concentration for the sulfuric, so you've got more information for it. So your starting point, you could say, if you're looking for a rule or something to get you started with these questions, is look for the thing that you've got the most information for. And if you've got any two pieces of information from a triangle, you can calculate the missing third. Now, the other thing here as well is some people could argue, well, you've got the volume for the NH3, why can't you just use the gas triangle then? Because you just need that 24 value then, don't you? Look at your state symbols. We've got aqueous in here for the NH3, so we can't use the gas triangle because it's not a gas. So we need to stick with what we've got. So what's our first step for this then? First step is going to be quite simple. We're going to use the uh, what we call at ASFC the solution triangle, and we're going to use that to find the number of moles of the H2SO4. Now, solution triangle is going to be moles equals concentration times volume. Now, your volume here as well, can I just make a plea that you double check, you've got this divided by a thousand, because that's got to be in decimeters cubed, because your units for concentration are moles per decimeter cubed, and otherwise you won't get an answer that's in moles. And at this point here then, our value, I'm going to put it in standard form as well, which is what the actual mark scheme for this one showed us when I checked it, which is 3.25 times 10 to the minus 3. There we go. Now, the next step then is to use the ratio, and we've just discussed as well, and we can see, I'll just make a note of it here, but the ratio is 2 to 1 in the way the equation is written, but remember, we're transitioning across to the left-hand side. So that means we need to copy the ratio, not in the halving it direction, but actually in this nice clear times 2 direction. So we're going to move over to the NH3, because now we can actually uh, find the number of moles of that. So, our moles of the NH3 are going to be the moles that we've just calculated times 2. And so that gives us a value of, at this point, 6.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, this is the bit that some people then get thrown on, but remember, this would only be for the last mark, so it's not the end of the world if you find this the most difficult part. This 25 centimeter cubed of the NH3 that's reacted, because they tell you here that they found the student titrated and found that that amount of NH3 required the, that amount of sulfuric acid. That is, as I described to you in lesson, it's like one slice of the pizza. And here at the top of the screen, just have a quick look, that is our whole pizza. So what we now need to do is take the moles we've got here in the 25 and find out how many moles we've got in the 400. So what we need to do is we need to go on a journey. When we go on a journey, we times by our postcard. So our postcard is going to be the 2 divided by the from. So the 2 is the 400, like you write a postcard, to such a body, from yourself. And we're coming from the 25. 
So we're going to do that just into here. And then it's going to give us our answer, which is going to tell us how many moles of ammonia we had in the original solution, which was 0 0.104 mol. Now, they could then ask you to go on to something else, but that was the limit of this question. It was three marks, as I mentioned at the start, one mark for each line. And you can see here that what they could do is they could turn this moles, they could ask you what the original concentration of that solution was. It would be the same as the sample, but they could ask you at that point. Or they could say that that solution was made by diluting a more concentrated solution. So what was the concentration of the more concentrated? They could ask you whatever they want. But you just need to be mindful that these are the steps and how we do this journey step just here is really important. I really want you to know about this journey step here, how we did that. I'm going to leave you to the rest of the playlist for now. And until then, happy revising.